can't beat amen or go forth in prayer, then we'll go straight to our praise and worship. Now come on up, praise team. She'll already be here on the stage. Amen. Do not turn your mics on yet. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and pray you right now for your goodness and your mercy, God. You are so wonderful. We thank you and praise you for what you've done for us and how you move greatly in our lives, God. We thank you for those that have come out tonight, God, to bless your name, God. We just thank you for the move that you're going to do on tonight through us and in us, God. We just ask that you bless all those that are on the way. Bless all those that weren't able to come out, God, had a desire to, God, send your word there in the name of Jesus, God. And we'll be so careful to give your name the glory and honor that is richly due. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, all right. How many know this is a day that the Lord has made? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Now you may not have no money on one, no money on one. 
still chasing after the Lord. Come on and put those hands together. See, ain't no problem chasing after Jesus, amen? He chases after us all the time, amen? By reaching out after our hearts, amen? So we got to do the same thing to learn more about him, amen? Reaching out back for the Lord, amen? Because he is so good to us. He is so beautiful to us. Yes, his grace is everlasting. Hallelujah. I'm chasing, I'm chasing after you. No matter what.
way to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, come on, let's bless his name. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just want to lift your hands up to the Lord and talk to him. Tell him all about your situation and circumstance and how tonight you're going to give yourself away. That means every problem that you've been dealing with, we're giving it to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Give myself away.
If you go to the 16th chapter of Acts, you don't have to go there now, but 16th chapter of Acts, verse 22, probably through 30, 31, you, you can read the story. Paul them exemplified what it was to go through. They really showed an example of what it is to bless the Lord at all times. If you know about the story, it talked about how they were put in a situation and they were beaten. The Bible says around the 22nd, 20, 21st verse, around there somewhere, that after they did what they did, they were beaten. They had their clothes ripped off of them. And they were beaten, naked. They were beaten and then thrown into the inner part of the prison. And I didn't catch this when I read it last time. I've read the scripture so many and studied it so many times. And then it says when they were put in prison and their feet were put in stocks. So they were shackled up, naked, beaten, beaten, naked first, and then shackled up, and then their feet were put in stocks where they couldn't even go anywhere. I don't know if they were sitting down or they made them stand up, but their feet were put in stocks. Amen. But, the, but for some reason, Paul and Silas didn't focus on the pain. They didn't focus on the stress. They didn't focus on what people put them in because Paul said, hey, it just got real. Hallelujah. It just got real. And we in prison, it just got real. We thought it was real out there when he was talking about it. And God was, remember, Paul was Saul before he turned into Paul. Amen. He was Saul until he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. The Bible says that Jesus took his eyes, blinded him a little bit, knocked him off the beast that he was riding because he was riding with a swagger. <laughs> he was riding with a swagger, a big time cowboy. I can just see him riding with a swagger. I don't know, was he riding a camel? He was riding a beast. That's all it said. But knocked him off of his beast because it was a howl. He, was, he had a snotty attitude. He was persecuting Christians. And he was doing it well because he was scared of them. Anytime somebody said, man, I think Paul, I think we just saw him saw. People would duck and hide and run and hide. So he did things to the folks. But when he met Jesus and he was convinced by Jesus what life was all about, he changed his attitude. And he went to the fullest there. Go ahead, stop it. Amen, amen. And you think about it, what Paul and Silas went through. When they were put into that prison, they was beaten. You know, sometimes the enemy can beat us down so much to try to beat out the joy out of us, beat our praise out, beat our prayer out, amen, try to get us into where we're hidden in a deep corner where it's dark, where he thinks that won't no praise be produced, won't no prayer be amen. produced, but he don't know the children of God, amen. amen. He don't know God's people, amen. Woo! When we get back up into a corner that the Spirit of the Lord rises up yes, and says, and we come out of that corner like a lion, amen, yes. hallelujah. what Paul and Silas was doing. He thought, well, you know, if I put them in the innermost part of the prison, the deep, back, dark dungeon, and I'm going to have them naked, cold, amen, and it stops, they won't have nothing to glorify God about. But how do you know that where your most deepest worship comes from, your deepest praise comes from when you feel like you're at the bottom of the pit amen. and can't nobody see you. But then something raises up on the inside on. and says, Lord, hallelujah, Woo! I trust you, Lord, I believe in hallelujah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, hmm, hallelujah, God moves on our behalf, hallelujah. Amen, amen. And I, I want to focus on what happened with them after they got beaten, and I'm so glad you touched on that. After they got beaten, they were thrown in with the stocks and stuff like that in the inner part of the prison, the deepest part. The Bible says at midnight, the darkest hour of their day, the darkest moment of life. How many have had a midnight? You've dealt with a midnight, and it just seems so dark, like nothing's going to happen. But the Bible says at midnight, Paul and Silas, one sang and one praise. In other words, they said, I will bless the Lord at all times. If you're going to put me in prison, I'm going to praise him. If you're going to put me in stocks, I'm going to worship him because I know God. I trust God. I have a God in who I believe in, and I have it. Who is God to you? Is he everywhere? My Bible tells me that he's omniscient and he's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. So if he's everywhere at all times, I will bless the Lord at all times. Hallelujah. And I can just imagine what the people were saying, and it was for their benefit. Don't you know that the drama that you go through sometimes is for somebody else's benefit? Because you already have Jesus. Hallelujah. They're looking at the business that we have. People call me and write me all the time. Either on my phone or they write me, inbox me on, on Facebook. And it's people that, that go to other edifices, go to other churches that don't even come here. People around the world that say, you know what, I just need you to pray. 
Because I believe you walk with God. I don't believe you God. I believe you walk with God. I just need you to pray. And I'm like, well, who is God to you? That's right. And Paul and Silas must have had God deep down inside. Because in fact, he said, well, if you beat us, we still going to praise you. If you beat us, we're still going to worship. And you put me there. And the Bible says that they sang and they prayed. And the prisoners heard them. Hallelujah. Prisoners heard them. They heard the singing. And they heard the praise. And I believe somebody, and this is my mind, so I said, what did Jesus say to you? They got ripped off their clothes and they got beat. You know how in jail, seems like in jail, everybody knows what's going on on the outside world. They know what kind of crime you've committed. They know why you're in there. And, you know, they find it out before the newspaper find it out. Because I used to work in prison. They find it out. Yeah, we know what you're in here for. And yeah, we're going to get you. We're going to get you because we know what you're in here for. But I'm sure that somebody said, hey, did they just get beat? Then they can come in here naked. Then they get socks put on them. They still singing and praising. Who is this God that they worshiping? Who is this that got these folks just on cloud nine that's happy? You're keeping it. You're talking about keeping it 100. They kept it 100 right there because of the, we're going to keep it 100 with Jesus because he's If anybody's 100, it's Jesus. Amen? Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. And then the Bible says God sent an earthquake. Okay, first, first of all, God, I done got whipped with my clothes ripped off of me. Then you're going to put me in any part of the prison. And I'm saying, I'm serving, because you know we complain. God, I've been doing all that I can. I've been loving you all that I can. I've been worshiping. I've been paying my tithe. I've been falling before you on my face. I've been good to people. And you let this happen to me? How could you let this happen to me, God? Amen. You know we do that. Amen. We do that. We, we think God owes us. But they said to the fact that we're going to praise him anyway. We're going to do it. And then you're going to send an earthquake while I'm in prison. My feet are in stocks. I can't even run if the bricks start falling in the prison trying to follow me. Because you know when they have an earthquake, you've seen an earthquake on TV. The bricks start falling and everything. But I'm in stocks now. And the Bible said all the earthquake did for them was loose their shackles and open all the jail cell doors. Woo! Hallelujah! And, and here's the key. They could have left. Because right. the jailer and the guard were asleep. They could have left. They were asleep. But the Bible said they woke up to the fact and seen all the doors open, seen all the people free, that he pulled out his sword and was about to kill himself. And Paul said, hey, don't worry about it, brother man. We all still here. And the coolest part of this whole thing is they didn't leave. They stayed there because the jailer asked them, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have what you have? What must I do to get this God that you trust in? How in the world can you still serve a God and then I see this happening and then y'all don't leave? And see, that's what I told somebody the other day. I said, if you real about ministry when you locked up in jail, because you know everybody in jail gets saved. Or they turn into a Muslim because I need bean pies. Everybody in jail gets saved. Amen. Man. How many of you heard people? Because I, I work there, you know, I have a son that used to be in jail, or I can't tell you which one, but I have one that's been through jail in and out. Everybody in jail finds Jesus. And then everybody says, you know what, I'll get out. I'm going to be the biggest evangelist and I'm going to serve. And I'm saying, if you, if you keep it 100, when it's time for you to get out and you saved in prison, you, you might say, you know what, I, I think I'm going to stay here a little bit longer because this is where my ministry is. That's what Paul did. Paul and them was real about things. They stayed in prison until the jailer and his whole family, it's in the word, until his whole family received the salvation of Jesus Christ. Can you stay? And you know what's crazy if you think about it? Paul and Silas were in jail. They were falsely identified at first because what they did, the people said, came to them and said to the magistrate, these are Jews. Well, Paul and Silas were actually Roman citizens. Amen. They could have thrown that car and said, wait a minute, hold up. We Roman citizens, so why are you putting us in jail? Amen. You know, but they didn't. They knew there was a purpose for them. You know, sometimes we want to use our, you know, our clout card. God don't want us to use our clout card. He wants to get the glory because they would have gotten the glory and said, oh yeah, they, they put out there, they're Roman citizens. And then the jailer wouldn't have been saved and the people in jail wouldn't have got delivered, amen. But God, I guess God told them, don't say anything about who you are. Just go on and get thrown in jail. 
and you get beaten and everything, I'm going to work the rest of it out. Amen? So sometimes it's, it's good. Sometimes we have to learn to be silent sometimes as far as who we are and where we are and let God do the work. Amen? Not pull out our cloud card, but let God do it. Amen? Because then he gets the glory out of it. And it's just so much more miraculous. Amen? Amen. Amen. And real quick on that earthquake, I don't think Paul and Silas knew that God was going to send an earthquake. Come on now. Come on now. All they did was pray and sing. And I'm pretty sure once that earthquake hit, it was like, oh, wait a minute now. What is going on? Oh, they were saying, we read the praise. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> amen. Amen. So much of all, amen. Oh. amen. But the Lord was so strong that the jail was dead. They said, we all here. So they do a head count. They said, okay, those that are in cell block one, let me hear you say present. Come on. You know, because he said, we all here. Don't kill yourself. We all here. So the word is that powerful. What they pray and what they say was so powerful that the jailer said, the prison said, we're not going to leave here. We want to hear more of this. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want people to see your pain or your praise? When you're going through, just think about it. Do you want the enemy to see your pain or your praise? If you've got God on the inside of you, you have to see, it's about knowing. Yeah, I don't care how old you are and how young you are. Remember, David was anointed king at the age of 13. King of a nation. But do you want, when you're going through when you get in a battle, when you get in a battle, do you want people to see your fear or do you want them to see your strength? Do you want them to see your tears or your worship in a situation where people see you and they hear you talk about this God you serve? Do you want them to see your struggle or do you want them to see your strength? The prisoners were very moved by everything that Paul and Silas did. Because Paul and Silas preached real deliverance. They preached staying with God until the work was done. And they stayed until God saved the jailer's family, his whole family, and him. I don't know if he ran home to get his family from the jail. I don't know if he told, I don't know if they all had jobs there and they were working on different sections. But the word of God said they stayed until the jailer and his whole family receive the love of Jesus Christ. And my question to you today, with whatever you're dealing with, this power, praise, and worship, can you stay? Can you stay amidst everything you've seen with friends, family? Some of us have dealt with things that have gone wrong even in our homes. Hallelujah. Sometimes you don't have no choice. You don't have no choice to be in the position that you're in. You don't have no choice and you have no control over your circumstances. But guess what? God is in control of your circumstances already. Amen? Amen? Amen. As long as I can, do you have that in your system? Since you know God, since you believe in God, since you know there is a God, can you say, can you believe this? As long as I can, I will bless Him. As long as I can, I will praise Him. As long as I can, I will worship Him. As long as can, I can, I will love Him. As long as I can, I will trust Him. Anytime, any place, anywhere, everywhere at all times at my home on the job at school in the store in pain in prison there's no place that I won't bless God you know why he's omnipresent he's omniscient and since he's everywhere since he sees since he knows everything and he's the controller of everything, that means I have a right to praise him whenever I can. Amen. Nobody can call me crazy. Nobody can call me a lunatic. Nobody can usher me out. Nobody can kick me out. Nobody can put me out. Because my God controls the universe. How do you act in your own home? Everybody stand to your feet. How do you act in your home, own home? I know in our house, we, our kids pretty much have rain. This is your house. This is your refuge. They can't do crazy, crazy stuff, but they can go in and play games. They can watch TV. They can lounge around. They can go in the refrigerator and eat when they want to. You know why? Because it's daddy and mama's house. But my Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And all they that dwell therein. You can praise him anyway. You can love him anywhere. 
you can worship him anywhere, in any circumstance. If you would from this day forward start praising God, even the babies, even the young children, if you would just start worshiping God in your own way, no matter what's happening in your home and in your life, I guarantee you God's going to move for you. He's going to send some form of, of, of something to break and loose every shackles. But here's the thing. Can you stay? Can you stay until? Can you stay until God tells you, okay, the work is done? No matter if you like the situation, can you focus enough to say, I'm going to focus on glory. I'm going to focus on my gift. I'm going to focus on what you have for me to do. I get discouraged sometimes. But I believe I'll run on to see what the end's going to be. Lift your hands where you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we just bless you right now. God, we thank you right now again for your omnipresence and your omniscience. God, we thank you for being everywhere, anywhere, in all places, at all times, and knowing all. Right now, God, I would that you release the spirit that Paul had. That I would focus on you. Release the spirit that Silas had. Now, God, none of us want to be beaten. None of us wants to be cast into prison with stops on. But God, here's my thing. If it is your purpose and your will and you are there, and I can have peace and praise in you, guess what? We're all right with that. Give us strength to do more in you. To love more in you. I come against that spirit of being a, a baby baby and always whining anytime something gets hard. You serve a hardcore God that's harder than any problem, that's stronger than anything that can come against us. And we believe you and we trust you and we give you honor, and praise, and glory right now. Now, God, I wish you could bless every home right now that's represented here. Bless every child. Cover their heart right now. Cover their minds right now. I come against things that come to try to destroy them, things that try to make them want to give up. I come against it right now by the blood of Jesus. And I stand firm on your word that I will bless you at all times. Hallelujah. I will praise you at all times. My praise, your praise shall continually be in my mouth. I brag about you, God. I'll trust you. I'll make folks say, what in the world is he on? So that they see you and know that it is you. As long as you never leave me, stay with me. And I know your promises are just that, promises. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Come on. Come on, clap your hands and praise. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap Can you stay? That's the order. They can you stay? Remain standing. We get ready to dismiss. Thank you for being out the power, praise, and worship night. Amen. It has been a joy again tonight. This joy that I have, the world can't give it to me and the world can't take it away. That's Amen. the beauty of Jesus right there. You know, the world try to tell you, you know, you know, you, you got the right to be upset. I got a right to praise him too. Because you didn't give me this joke. I got this. Look at somebody say, I got this. I got this. Say, I got this. Hi. You got this joy. Amen. Amen. That this joy prayers. Leave here tonight with a this joy prayers. Leave here tonight saying, I will stay until the work of God is done. No matter what it is. Because God has shown you. Anything that happens to you, if you love God and you have a relationship with God, it's going to be there. There's going to be a purpose there. There's going to be a job for you to stay until it's done. If you have a love offer that you want to give, or you want to pay tithe in the night, please do so. If not, come back, son. Everybody stand. Lift it up, darling. Lift it up. Lord, we bless you right now. We lift this up like you did, like they lifted up the two fish and five loaves. And fed the five thousand. And all he did was say, thank you. Let this be more than enough. God, we thank you. And we say, let this be more than enough in you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
All right, you are dismissed. Tell somebody to tell me love you. Hallelujah.